please welcome the Right Reverend Al Sharpton. Wonderful to see you again. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, uh, Bishop. Let me say I wanted to be here today because I wanted all of you to know how important Reverend and Mrs. Ike has been to all of us in this nation and around the world. As I was coming in the back, Xavier is too young. I should say Bishop. That's my name. Xavier. But I've known him. <laughs> He's too young to know. But when I was a boy preacher, my mother was enamored by the ministry of Reverend and Mrs. Ike. And she took me to the Sunset Theater on 125th Street. And she wanted to see this man who come from Boston named Reverend Ike, who was on WWRL at night. And we went to the service as I was leaving with her. I, was, I had toured with Mahalia Jackson as a boy preacher. One of the ushers said, Reverend Ike wants to see you. I said, see me? He says, aren't you the boy preacher? I said, yes. And they brought me in. And he said, I used to hear you preach at Washington Temple when you were a little boy. As they moved to United Palace, I used to sit right up there. Because in those days, as she preached, he was controversial. So we Kojic folk wasn't supposed to come to United Palace. <laughs> so I would slip up there with a young minister that Mrs. Ike would know named Reverend Wesley Lee. And Wesley and I would sneak and listen to Reverend Ike, and then we'd go around the back and wait for him to come out. And as time went on, we got to be friends. I would go to their apartment facing Lincoln Center. Bishop Pierce and many people had come to New York, said to me, I want to meet Reverend Ike, and I've taken them to that apartment. I brought Muhammad Ali to that apartment. I brought Louis Farrakhan to that apartment. Many people would come to that apartment. They sowed seeds in Reverend Jesse Jackson and his family. Reverend Ike is not only a spiritual giant and a religious giant and a patriarch, and Mrs. Ike today as matriarch. But they also revolutionaries because they came to Harlem and Washington Heights to break the mental chains of a people who had been blocked from their divinity. And they will never know the impact they had on many of us that got the courage and boldness because of them to think and become what we already was but didn't realize. So when our friend Lou Willard asked if I would drive by the banquet. I said I couldn't do that, but I would come earlier because I wanted her to know what she never knew. What you never will know is that when you spread seeds, you never know what will grow from the seeds. Whatever I have done and others have done is because you planted seeds in little boys that you never knew what they would grow to be. I'm glad that I snuck in that balcony because it put something in me. The last time I saw Reverend Ike in the flesh, we were at the Plaza Hotel. I had done the wedding for Bishop Jordan. And I said some of this to him. And he said, son, are you taking care of your family? Take care of your family. He said, always put some away. I said, yeah, I said, I remember a lot of what you would say. 
As he says, isn't that something? He says, you were the little boy in the back at 176th Street. He said, now there are little boys that are waiting for you to come out of building. He said, you invest in them the way I invested in you. I come to thank you for sharing and investing in little boys like me. And I will do my best to never shame that investment. Thank you. Reverend Al Sharpton, thank you so much. God bless. So appreciate you. Reverend Al Sharpton.